Good morning and welcome back to the Cop TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Smash that like button, comment with your thoughts about last night and then Sunday, uh, and then subscribe to the channel if you have not already. A good time to. I know it's ironic saying that, but I've got some really cool content lined up next week that I'm not even going to tell you about because I don't want to ruin it. Um, but it's going to be great. So subscribe. This is your match preview Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. As always, we have Mr. Walker, Joe Walker, in the studio um, talking about the Palace. How are we, mate? I'm good, thank you. Um, I've. I'm not. I'm not getting any ideas after last night. But I, what happened last night? I, I was just Liverpool played in Europe, didn't they? Just, Did they? Yeah. Oh, don't worry. Don't don't check the result. Don't check my phone. No, no, don't no. Go on Twitter. No, no, no. no. It's been, all them ringing off, all them them buzzes and calls you've had. It's not a family emergency or anything. It's just. Right. It's just. Okay. Well, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but unfortunately, yes, you are correct. <laughs> Liverpool did. Play. Oh, I'll use quotation marks on that. Um, before we get into the palace, will you allow me just a minute to have a rant? Uh, it would be cruel and negligent if I didn't. Deny me the opportunity. Please. Right. Where do I start? Well, let's start with the, um, the no flags on the cop last night, which is a protest due to the 2% rise in ticket prices next season, which I love. Liverpool fans all around the world, you've got every right. The match going fans have got every right to protest against that. Klopp spoke about it beautifully as he always does. He said, look, I'm with them. I understand something will get sorted to alleviate these issues. But at the same time, the flags won't be there as long as you never walk alone is there and the fans are there. That's all I need. And then he proceeds to put out uh, a weaker team, which in my opinion showed um, complacency. It showed arrogance towards Atalanta, who let's not forget, they've just beaten Napoli 3-0 away. They're sixth in Serie A. They've lost one home game in 10. Um, place where we've got to go, Bergamo, next Thursday now. Um, so listen, the team sheet comes out. You know, it, there's no surprises really. But again, he did drop Salah. He dropped Diaz. You know, he played Gakpo. Um, the midfield was the, the midfield that's actually done really well for us this season. But from minute one last night, Liverpool weren't at it. There was no fight, no desire. The midfield for some reason and maybe apart from McAllister <clears throat> Endo looked way off it Sobosly that's his worst game for Liverpool I mean the third goal is an absolute joke the lack of running back is horrendous but the first goal if I'm honest Cuivin should have saved it you know he took one right to the face which was a great save to be honest um, black eye on the guy could barely even see through that eye for this for the first goal but that was at a point when we should have already been one new up <clears throat> it was a great ball I think from Curtis to put in Nunez and it's like his brain just dun 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 mm -hmm. how he's not finished that or how he's not kind of um, presumed that the goalkeeper is going to come out spread himself how have you not just taken that round him and slotted it I don't know so ourselves to blame going forward. I think, you know, we had three shots the whole game, which is disgusting at home. It was a disgrace of a f performance. I actually thought I was in 2010 sometimes. And I know your guy's Roy Hodgson, but I thought this was a Christian Paulson and Roy Hodgson night. The second goal, fantastic goal, if I'm honest. Skamaka couldn't, do, couldn't hit a barn door mm -hmm. for West Ham in the Premier League, but comes to Anfield and just runs riot. Probably should have scored a hat-trick as well. So that's 2-0 great finish and then the third and at that point you're thinking as they break away this could be four um, and we were saved they missed a, a couple of howlers right towards the end so to actually escape 3-0 and this sounds mental and I, I've never said this on the Cop TV before to escape 3-0 loss at home it was actually a, it's the only positive really because it could have been four or five again we scored an offside goal Mo Salah should know better should know better to look across the line just before check your run slot it in and then Jota at the end we're all saying when this guy comes back he's going to finish all the chances that Salah and Darwin have missed even he can't hit a barn door first thing he did was win us almost a penalty which I was thinking okay Jota's back but the headers awful so Liverpool last night disgusting I'll be honest that was the most embarrassing Anfield performance under Klopp maybe at least against Real Madrid we scored two we lost 5-2 that's the biggest joint biggest European home defeat for Liverpool you know we lost a couple of games last season 3-1 3-0 in our really rough period but to lose 3-0 at home is nothing short of a disgrace Joe now there's no clean sheet in eight mm. 
three wins in seven. Palace come to Anfield on Sunday, having watched that last night. Yeah. Now, tell me, from a, a rival um, team coming to Anfield on Sunday, how do you digest last night? Do you think, right, what a time to go to Anfield? Or do you think this could be the worst time to go to Anfield? Because I'll be honest, if we perform like that on Sunday, you might as well just collect the three points now. Yeah, but a, a, a side like a, Palace's, a club of Palace's size, pessimists over optimism. And let, if we're in good form, the optimistic and you go wounded beast let's go for it but a team you know you've thrown out those stats Palace I think have won once since Glass has come in um, we have still got really thin squad we concede we've conceded 10 goals after the 90th minute this season it's like we've got we've, we've scored a lot after the yes yeah this so we've got our own problems and, and you kind of look at it and go have you just squeezed out all your bad like you know when some some pros actually like to miss all their chances in the warm up they're out. like get out get the mistakes out of the way so I'm in the zone for the when, when the whistle, yeah. whistle goes it's a bit like that it's like you've let out all your kind of errors and complacency three days before the game which is not ideal but and but equally, whether it was resting players, I know a lot of them had to come on in the end. Like Salah comes on at half time, doesn't he? Diaz came on. Yeah. yeah. So if it was done in mind for prioritising the league campaign, uh, does it now put extra pressure on? Well, it better have been worth it now. If you're going to get beat, you have to now deliver on the Sunday. Um, yeah, so just a bit. Yeah. And. Do you think the crowd will respond accordingly? Do you think they'll they'll there's, rally? Uh, there's going to have to be a big firework up all of them to get ready for Sunday now. I mean, Klopp at half time was was asking for right, it. Come yeah, on, yeah. give us something, man. I've been in them situations when Klopp's done that and we have responded. And there was still a part of me, maybe due to arrogance of just being so comfortable at Anfield 99% of the time in any competition. Mm. There was a part of me at 68 minutes right when we're three nil down going it's cool we'll still draw this three or and then yeah because that's just what we do it's what we're supposed to do yes, it's yeah. how things happen at Anfield but obviously no response came um it was horrible throughout and there's just no option now it's not even if like right it was a two all last night we're still in the tie let's mm. go there and win we had to almost finish the tie off last night and again, that was arrogant because we, we showed Atalanta no respect and they showed us no respect as they should yeah. have done and they ran away with it. So the fans have to be ready for Sunday. You know, two o'clock kickoff on a Sunday, hopefully the sun's out. <clears throat> you know, knowing that we've got Atalanta a Thursday, knowing that we've then got Fulham away the Sunday and then I think it's Everton away right. and then West Ham away right okay so this was this I don't want to right. sound like Gary Neville but this was your banker yes yeah, yeah last yeah. night in a way mm. you know with Palace now on Sunday at home do we then play four away games mate yeah and yes our away form has been decent this season but since that 4-3 at Old Trafford I don't know what's happened it's, it's fallen off a cliff a little bit the midfield which is a area of the pitch that I've been so encouraged by yeah. and so happy with the legs the energy everything like that none of that was there so yeah in answer to your question we have to be up for it I mean I watched Palace play City on, on the weekend obviously went 1-0 up great strike Mateta seems to be finding his feet yeah. a little bit there were real glimpses in that game where I was like wow okay but then as you said just before we went on air it gets to 60, 70 minutes and the kind of the energy just dies away and the quality from the other team shines through. I mean, Liverpool start awfully at home mm. traditionally this season, especially recently. Is that something that Glasner and the boys from your team are going to look at and say, let's quiet them, let's frustrate them and then get ahead and then park the bus or, or would you go for it even more or is that going to backfire I mean what's the game plan going into Sunday now that City game was probably the the best clue as to how we would approach that game because so far in Glasner's spell we haven't really played it I think Tottenham were the biggest side we played up to that point um, so we've been kind of trying to go at teams in those other games playing like the Lutons and Forest we have taken the lead in all but one of Glasner's games um, and I think that game was we lost 1-0 at Bournemouth and had a goal disallowed. So we like to start and get in front and then just kind of try and catch you on the break. We do have players that can uh, if fit. And that has been the story of Palace this season. The reverse fixture, um, 
the, when you came to Sellers, I remember being here and talking about, we've got excellent players, none of them are playing. Some of them are back. Michael Lisa is probably going to start on Sunday, which yeah. will be his first start since probably Christmas. I'm worried about that, if I'm honest. Yeah. I'm worried about that. Yeah, I'm worried about his hamstring because <laughs> he seems to pop at any sure opportunity. He as well. But um, he's that would that would immediately make me way more comfortable on the threat we offer right. and being on the counter. It also allows us to have a little bit more. You know, let's say he plays 60, 70 minutes. There's actually somebody to bring on because at the moment Palace giving it all our all of our effort, and then it gets to 60, 70 minutes, and you just see run out of puff, and we've got children on the bench. Really, loads of players that have never played for Palace. Um, at, at senior level and they're not ready you know there's a part you know Liverpool are a club that there'll be games where it makes sense to bring them on and and I think in our position we're a little bit more nervous and go the stakes are a bit too high here we're, never, we're very rarely 3 4 no up or something to go go and go have a run out mm. and so we're just reliant on the sort of core 12 or 13 players that we've got and you just see a fall away time and time again it's still better than the latter days of the Roy Hodgson spell fans turn because we would start neg- he would be like right we haven't got a lot of players let's just just t- sit back and just like get in a fetal position and then you still get but which is fine if you're getting results I wonder he got sacked in the end yeah it's Left fine him. it's fine if you're nicking results but we were still getting beat yeah so Glaser comes in he's like alright let's let's go for it with what we've got but we're still kind of not winning the game so it's it's going to be an entertaining game I think he'll fancy he'll fancy just um, picking your particularly those kind of mistakes like the third goal last night um, or even this, the you know, pick, winning the ball high up the pitch is what we've been doing really well at, which is something that really worked well under the Vieira spell as well. For these players, really like attacking high up. Um, we and, did against City, you win the ball back, play the yeah. ball in behind. John Stones is, is number facing facing yeah. his own goal, running back, and Mateta finished yeah. like really well. And we should have that first half could have got another two. I reckon yeah. I hit the bar from another one just yeah, picking yeah, off yeah. Rodri or Stones, and there was a few other ones like that. Um, the, yeah. It's we'll get chances, I presume. It's just, but I also think we'll concede a bunch as well. Mark Gay's not fit. Um, our, our backup centre halves are Chris Richards, a US international. He's injured. Um, Rob Holding, we signed in the summer. He's been injured the whole I'm season. Like Rob, you know, I forgot about him. He's so injured. He has not started in a league for us yet, and he was like in Nashville for that Premier League event last week he's just like in full ambassador role already wow. so we're playing Joel Ward at centre back wow. um, I don't know who else would be alongside him now James Tompkins maybe yeah, as well Anderson as Anderson out. Anderson's there but we've been playing three centre backs so it's we'll, we'll concede as many chances as we'll try to create and it's great as a neutral it's great if you come out on top in those right. games uh, but yeah it's uh, I think all Palace fans even after the Thursday game that we've just seen are still going <sighs> It's not the one we were looking forward to. Yeah, because if I was a Palace fan, I'd be going, guys, that's your blueprint. Mm. Listen, 3-0 Anfield, not everyone can do that. Yes. But that's that's the blueprint of how to upset, frustrate, rattle them. Mm. Um, I mean, all over the pitch last night, Liverpool were toothless. Defence, I mean, as I said, Cueven Keller potentially could have saved the first goal, but I can't have a go at him for everything that he's done recently for Liverpool. Um, going to, be, into- to be where you are, at yeah, this stage of the special. season he's played more than Alisson this he season has, now right and, and beautifully segued so this is some good news I guess is Trent right. who was on the bench last night great by the way great to see Stefan Bejcetic on the bench last night who hasn't featured this season was actually our bright spark from that really dark period of December to March in 22-23 um, so great to see him on the bench last night again why not throw him in but Alisson Jota Trent I'm expecting them now, especially because of last night, I'm expecting them now to all start this game. Right. And that's not to say that, you know, Conor Bradley hasn't done a great job, not to say that Cueven Keller hasn't done a great job, but this is the time where they are needed. Now, again, going forward last night, Nunes awful, Salah awful, Jota awful. Um, I mean, <clears throat> people like to call him Captain Chaos. It's all a bit of a laugh and a joke when he scores, but who missed three? At least he scored, he got an assist. I think now the laughs have stopped because in that crucial moment where you need him to score, he's not now. And that's kind of two games in a row where he could have and should have. Um, So again, we're going to have to be on the front foot. I'm assuming that with those players coming back, we should be close to, if not a full strength team. Um, In terms of injuries, 
again, we're actually touch wood coming up to a, a crucial point in the season where we're looking to be fairly fully fit. Um, you've mentioned a few injuries that you've got. Um, I'll get into a lineup prediction now. I, I will go with Allison. I think straight into the the Lions den. You're going to have to mm. pick up from where he left off. I mean. That injury against City, it seems like so long ago now yeah. that he kind of went down. I think it was a hamstring injury to start with. And then it, I think he, you know, picked something up again in training. So it'll be him. Trent Alexander-Arnold, right? Going forward, defensive, you've got to be on top of it. Again, no real time to warm up, straight back into it. Start well, that's the key for us on Sat on Sunday. Start well, we, we rarely start well in games at the minute. So it'll be him. Um, Kanate and Van Dijk who got pulled apart last night by Skamaka I never thought I'd say that and then Robertson at left back do you know what I'll give Robertson a bit last night he was the only one I think who was really pushing advancing with the ball um, trying to whip crosses in fair play to him so he starts now this is the the question mark for me personally I'm dropping Dominic Soberslay man right. I'm dropping him um Endo hasn't done enough to be dropped. I still think he's our key to win games in the Premier League. Rarely lost games for Liverpool. Never lost a game in the Prem whilst he started. So he starts. McAllister is the number one name on the team sheet at the minute. He can do no wrong, to be honest. He, him and Robbo were the only two last night that I can maybe give a bit of praise to. And there's that spot in midfield. Now, Harvey Elliott did score the winner away at Palace in the uh, in the corresponding fixture. I'm, I'm sticking Harvey in. Um, I think my favourite position for him to be in is, is midfield. Them kind of not really wide positions but them inside channels where he scored from yeah. against Palace but all those <coughs> almost those like those early central crosses that Nunes yes. can get on the back of uh, he lo he loves a little kind of eight eye and a little chip over not too much pace on it just a little chip see yeah. what you've got in terms of going forward so I'm starting him let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree and then it's Diaz it's Jota and it's Salah I don't think uh, Nunes did enough last night to regain that starting place. But when you're playing for Liverpool and you're mid-April and you're fighting on three fronts, I'm sorry, if you don't score for two games, you're out. Yeah, you got to be Jota's hot. coming in. And if Jota doesn't score after 60 minutes, Nunes, that's just how yeah, it works yeah. with, with the top side. So, again, the bench, I'm looking at Bejcetic to come on. I'm looking at uh, Soboslai, Nunes and Gakpo to bring on off the bench. Now, that should would should be enough to get us through it but from your side how strong do you go who do you want to see starting and then we'll get into our score predictions um we'll have dean henderson in goal sam johnston was looking like he was going to play for england in that last international break he's I, do, out, I feel for him man he's now going to miss the euros i feel for him we've had our kind of mini aaron ramsdale raya situation with those yeah. two i think one was fed up and then we signed dean henderson and he was like oh actually I've, and then by the time that happened Sam Johnson's like, oh, I'm getting games. I'm quite happy <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Dean Henderson suddenly is going to look, he's our highest paid player, which is really odd as a really? backup goalie, yeah. So, you got, you think all the, all the, like Zaha went, and I think a lot of, even the Elise's, Eze's, they might have had a pay bump this season. Yeah. They were on, like, release clauses, though. I think they're still, they were still quite young, so they've come from very small wages. But anyway, yeah, Henderson is, he, fans haven't really been convinced by him yet, but he had a really good save from Rodri in that, in that City game. He'll start and he's he needs a moment. I and I think like these are the kind of games where we you don't kind like of make him, He obviously used to play for United. Yeah, yeah. We beat them at Old Trafford 4 2. He's in goal. He's trying to give it. Yeah, yeah. So we don't like him. No, I'll no. be honest. And I'm sure he, he seems like the kind of guy that relishes that. Yeah. But um, Pickford mould kind yes, of. Yes, very much so. Housery. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be playing like a back, a back five slash back three. More likely to be a back five given depending on how much of the ball we've got. So that's Joel Ward coming in at centre back. Right. Joachim Anderson in the middle who might be taking a lot of the goal kicks. Henderson's not fully fit, actually, but we don't want to go back. Do you remember the, well, the correspondent vision we brought on Remy Matthews? Yeah. And that was his Premier kick. League debut at like 30. Wow. We don't, we're trying to avoid that because they scored immediately, didn't you? I think and we got both goals. this is the return, the head-to-head, -head, quite literally, of Anderson yeah. and Nunez, potentially. Yeah. I like Anderson. I think he's a good player. Very, very classy when used properly, basically. Um, just excellent, kind of flat, long ball that's yeah. just really... Great technique. Really f uh, threatening. Um that third centre-back is a miss. It could be Jefferson Lermo, who's played, come back and played there a few weeks. Wow. 
Yeah, played last couple wow, of weeks there. Centre back. Uh, if not, if Chris Richards is fit, the American, then he'll probably go there. Uh, left back, you've got a wing back. You've got Tyreek Mitchell, who's doesn't he's a decent defender. Yeah. Lacks a little bit going in the forward areas and that thing. But on the right hand side is kind of the opposite, and this is probably an interesting player to watch because you would never really think about it. His name is uh, Munoz. Yeah, where uh, at 27 we bought in January from Genk, I want to say. Right. No real pedigree. This is the highest level he's played I've at. Seen Scotty Stacks tweeting about him quite a lot. He's absolutely bonkers. Like yeah. just, just given what we've been going through the last year, 18 months, he's constantly like, give me one twos, go and put me through. He's he he's been offside or in behind the back line of the opponents more than our strikers. Really, from right wing so back. So just a bit of a mental this case. Colombian, just true <laughs> South American continental wing back. He he will be any danger we create will be via him. It's going to be him and Diaz then up against yes. each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colombians. Yeah. Wow. So that's an interesting tussle that's to watch battle, out for. Yeah. Because Diaz will know to keep him busy. Right. And maybe that, and that's, behind that's your way to to stifle him basically. Midfield, you've got if if Lerma's not at the back, then it's so Lerma no there. Nathaniel Klein. Just to, no. Right. Okay. If God willing, he right. might come on. <laughs> he is still abound. He is still around. Oh my God. Our midfield, if, if Lerma's not a centre-back, he'll be there. If Lerma is at centre-back, it will be Will Hughes, which is not the level. Liverpool fan? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully no favours for you. But um, he's a hard worker, but not Did really the level. Did you give it this to Old Trafford? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a guy. What a guy. Yeah, good runner, but tyres and, yeah, walking yellow cards. Been around for a while as well. Yeah. Though. Adam Wharton, who's been like excellent. Him. Like really, him. really like impressive. I've seen of him. But more than anyone you would have thought the new signings would come in would be the ones to bring the energy he's gone at 60 minutes wow. like he'd like I think he's been asked to do so much at the moment given the kind of from Middlesbrough was it Blackburn Blackburn that was it yeah, yeah really tidy passer good tackler in two three years time would be a hell of a player and probably not a palace but he, he he's an interesting player for that first hour in terms of us trying to get anything in the game it will be a, he'll be a big element of that and then ahead of him you've got Maybe uh, you've got Eze, who has kind of been playing wider in the underglass, and it's not the best form of him, but you know, on the on the ball is still who he it's is. Class, yeah, class. Uh, probably if 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 Elise is fit, it'll probably be Elise on the right hand side. Uh, otherwise, it's Jordan Ayew, and then you're looking at still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still going. Still going. And his brother still going. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, if, if you were to do a podium of Palace's players of the season so far, he'd probably still be like third. He'd sneak in, yeah. yeah. But kind of the underdog in contention for number one is our striker. I cannot believe this. John Philippe Mateta has gone from being someone we've always laughed every window. We'd be like, we're getting rid of him now, yeah. surely. And then he'd score a hat trick in a cup. We'd go, oh, all right, go on. And he'd be linked with like all these jerk like Dortmund by Leverkusen. Going, what do you want him for? Because they basically remember him. He scored like. He scored a hatful over there for a bottom half for Mainz. Mainz. And we signed him and we're kind of like, we've never really seen it. And then from about Christmas, he's realised he's six foot three. He's realised he can jump. And he's now like using his physicality really well and is scoring goals, yeah. scoring all types of goals. And he's actually like, for a team of our level, is as good of a striker as we've had since promotion, really. Yeah, he's knocking them in. He's, again, great finish against City, yeah. posting in. Um, so again, you know... Palace have this weird Anfield thing where they get a result. Um, Relatively. Not all the time. But, but by the standards of Anfield, because you, you, you don't lose a lot of Anfield. Sure. So, yeah. But even when you don't get the result, it's a 3-2 or it's a 4-3. I remember the 4-3. Uh, the Mane one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and actually still it remains. In the last six years, we've lost one game at Anfield with fans in the stadium. That was... Uh, Leeds right. in October 22 yeah. before that it was Palace twice yeah and that was the Benteke the Benteke with return with Shake uh, does a little sort of special high five or spub with Mamadou Sacco yeah. on our bench who's on loan she's from on you loan. <laughs> and no wonder why Sacco never got back in the, the yeah. set up after being late to that pre-season tour yeah. Klopp was just like nah yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that's bad memories, man. Yeah. And I think Ward was still playing for you then. And yeah, but you ha you're going back, back there. You're going back like five years there. Twenty seventeen. I'm going back like yeah, seven yeah, years, yeah. bro. That's that's how far you have to go seven. back for kind of that show. That's an endorsement of not just how well your form has been against us generally, but the kind of but you've got Anfield, Anfield more recently since at Arsenal, right? 
For sure. Um, a city with fans in the stadium the last time was 2003. Right. So right. Palace, I don't know, man. What is it? I mean, they seem to but just get something. A draw last season, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Got it, one of our man sent off. It's that combo of we've got players that are happy to defend for their lives. Yeah. Someone like a Joe Ward is like, don't ask me to do anything else but get in the trenches. Yeah. But then there's always at least one player further up who get it to them, they'll, call, they'll always cause a problem against a team like yourselves who are like, We're, we want control of this game. Yeah. We're going to try and, we'll, we'll eventually break a Joel Warder and, and, and a team like that defensively. We'll get our goals. It's about whether we get caught while we're doing that. And yeah. we've always, because we've got a great record at City as well for you the do. same reasons. Because we've always got an Aliso and Eze or Zahar previously to go, they might get us something. And I feel like that should set us apart from the rest of the bottom half. But this season, we've just not been able to get them on the pitch and we're just as bad as everyone else. Score prediction time. And let us know in the chat. I mean, how confident are you for this one? Do you think that... Well, there's two ways you can look at this from, from both clubs. Our side is we must. We fight back. We destroy them. We give it everything. We get the morale up for um, Thursday next week, which now becomes... I, I mean, again, I'll ask you, which, which game is more important now? Is it Palace on Sunday? Or are you even thinking the Europa League's done now? Are you even thinking... Ugh, so that's one way of looking at it. The other way is, you know, we slump again and we don't get up for it. You know, you do what other teams have done a la Sheffield United scoring first and uh, we scored first, but they came back. The amount of times uh, that we've conceded the first goal and then we have to find ourselves really coming back into it is, is a joke. So there's a couple of ways to look at it. I mean, score prediction, I have to back the boys. I have to back us to, to bounce back. I have to back us to get the three points and then again put pressure back on Arsenal who play after us right. against Villa. But I'm not confident, bro. I'm not. So I'm going to go 2-1 Liverpool. And that, that could be a, a last-minute kind of madness as well. That's pretty much the exact way I would see it playing out. I could see us getting a goal. I could see... You You named all those potential subs in your lineup. So, like, you would bring in on Nunez, uh, Gakpo, uh, I can't remember who else. Sly. Silver Sly. That happening will win you the game. Or if, right. if you're behind, at very least, get you Change, level. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we, we are susceptible to once one goes in in the second half, you just hear the heads drop and then, then there's a double whammy. Right. And you, you, so, that, so that can happen at Anfield yeah, to anyone. Yeah, and I think that, that will be how the game is won. I think I, as much as I believe in Palace and I think they'll, they'll, show, they'll put their best performance in, I, I, I still worry about fitness for us against the top teams. So you're going two on Liverpool? Yeah. Okay. At the, I, I guess at that point for you, it's just like, Anything just get we'll do, win. yeah, yeah, just yeah. Get, I mean, listen, what do I want? I want us to go out and win 6-0. I yeah, need Yes, of course. Either, but yeah. of course I'd take a 2-1 and of course we need as much confidence going into next week and just a run of four away games now, which yeah. we, we can't rely on the Anfield crowd, can we? Yeah. So I mean, we've got 700 fans going to Bergamo next Thursday, mate. 700. That's mad. I think at Sparta Prague, I was there. We had, I mean, Jason was there as well. I think we had like 650. Wow. <laughs> there. So to get that noise... In Atalanta Stadium, where they're going to be bang up for it. Oh, God. One game at a time. Let's take this one first <laughs> on Sunday. I'm going for a slim Liverpool win. Let us know in the chat what you think. Massive shout out to Joe, as always. always pleasure, he's on man. Apple Radio. He's a big Palace fan. He's got his own podcast, The International Clearance, which I'm a big fan of. He speaks to ex-pros who uh, went abroad to, to ply their trade. You've had Peter Crouch on recently speaking about his time in the lower tiers in Sweden. Yeah. If you are a football nut like myself and you just drink in any football content, it doesn't have to be the Ronaldo's, the Messi's, this is the guy, trust me, very knowledgeable when it comes to football. And it's probably your hat-trick appearance, maybe more on the COP TV. Oh, I think, I think uh, we're into four or five. But I'll, uh, there's your hat-trick ball. Oh, thanks. So is that yours? Oh, not your signature. Not mine. Oh, no, okay. it wouldn't be worth anything. It was oh, mine. Lucky same. it is Trent. So there's your hat-trick. Almost a double hat-trick ball. <laughs> and uh, listen, you're going to stay up. So I'll see you next season on the Cup TV as well. See you next season. So man. guys, smash that like button. Show some love to Joe in the comments. I'll tag his uh, YouTube channel and, uh, and get involved and, and subscribe. Because as I said, we've got the game on Sunday. We'll have fan cams after that. And then there's something happening on Tuesday in Liverpool, which I'm not going to announce. But... The guy who signed that ball might have something to do with it. But I'm not going to announce anything else, right? You'll have to wait and subscribe to check it out. But listen, forget about last night. We go again on Sunday. We must win. Take care.
Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you check out the rest of the channel too. There's other stuff you'll enjoy for sure. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the Cop TV. The, the voice, voice of, of football's, football's most, most famous, famous dad. dad. Come on.